أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم أما بعد uh, We're going to start إن شاء الله today we're going to continue with Surah Al-Baqarah We're starting from Ayah 115 And Allah Azza wa Jal says وللله المشرق والمغرب فأينما تولوا فثم وجه الله إن الله واسع عليم And to Allah Azza wa Jal وللله المشرق Where the you know, the sunrise, where the, the, you know, the east, the risings of the sun, or the, the places of the east, wal maghrib and the west. فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn in direction, you are actually directing yourself towards Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, wherever you direct, you can, you know, talk to Him, you can, you know, raise your hand in the heavens, you can go this direction, that direction, everywhere, you're, you're in the direction of Allah Azza wa Jal. فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal is encompassing everything and He's the all-knowing. Um, Umar, can you just mute the computer? إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ Verily, Allah Azza wa Jal is encompass everything and He's all-knowing. So what happened is the Qibla to the Muslims was before people turned to the Mecca, the Qibla was Bayt al-Maqdis was the, uh, uh, today what we call the uh, um, uh, Masjid al-Aqsa in, in, in Palestine. So the Prophet said, and this was the Qibla of the people of uh, Bani Israel and the Christians. So the, the people of the book, their Qibla, they used to pray and then they used to direct themselves to Bayt al-Maqdis. The Prophet وسلم, used to pray and he used to stand where Maqam Ibrahim alayhi salam is in Mecca, during the time of Mecca. So he would stand, he would sit behind the Kaaba in Maqam Ibrahim, so he'll be facing Kaaba, and then behind it is Mecca. So that was his direction. Masjid. Right? Masjid al-Aqsa. And towards the Masjid al-Aqsa, but he still would, would stand, and he's not doing it just to, to be facing the Kaaba, but he was doing it because this was the Maqam of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is where Ibrahim alayhi salam used to pray. So he would direct himself the same way. When the Prophet ﷺ moved to Medina, now his direction is towards Masjid al-Aqsa, so his, the, the Kaaba is behind him. It's no longer in his you know, direction. The Kaaba was totally opposite way. So the Prophet always used to you know, look up in the sky, and we'll see now here in the ayat. So Allah Azza wa Jal is... is what happened, we'll see in this, in this, in this uh, uh, um, series of ayat where Allah Azza wa Jal has actually asked the believers to change the Qibla and told the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your Qibla now is Kaaba. It's Mecca, where the Kaaba is. It's no longer Bayt al-Maqdis. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal is doing something that will please the Prophet because the Prophet would be pleased more to be praying towards Kaaba. When he did this, the people of the book Bani Israel and some of the hypocrites start to basically question. You know what happened? You know, they were happy before that the, our Qibla was the same as their Qibla. When our Qibla changed to the word Mecca, they started, what's going on? You know, like he can't make up his mind. What is this religion? So then Allah Azza wa Jal is answering them in these ayats. And you will see the, the series of the ayats. <clears throat> and Allah Azza wa Jal, here he's saying that to him belong the East and the West. Wherever you turn is the Qibla towards Allah Azza wa Jal. So some people would take it and say, well, let's just pray any direction because of this ayah. And that's not the intent of the ayah. The intent is not that, you know, I can turn this way or turn this way or turn this way. No, we have a Qibla. We have a direction that is set. But where Allah Azza wa Jal say, you're doing dua, you're doing what, you know, it's more sunnah to do dua towards Qibla. But wherever you turn, you're driving, you can make dua to Allah. You're turning this way, you're turning that way. You're on your horse, you're on, you know, you're walking, you're running. You can always be mindful for Allah, uh, of Allah Azza wa Jal because, because He's everywhere. SubhanAllah. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا سُبْحَانَهُ And He's talking about, you know, they're, they're questioning about our Qibla. And Allah is saying, look what they have said. They're questioning about the Qibla and they're saying that Allah has begotten a son for Himself. Glory be to Him. What a, you know, how evil of, of the things they say. But لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ But to him belongs everything in the heavens and on earth. كُلُّ لَهُ قَانِتُونَ All of them are doing qunut to him. 
are basically muti'oon, uh, 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 yani obedience to, obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. Badiyu al-Samawati wal-Ard. He's the one who, who perfectly fabricated and created the heavens of the earth. They, he created them out of nothing, badiyah. You know, he, he made them out of nothing and he made them in a perfect shape, in a perfect situation, subhanAllah. Badiyu al-Samawati wal-Ard. وَإِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ And if he has decreed a matter, he will just say be and it would be. So they're saying he begotten a son and Allah Azza wa Jalla says he's the creator of the heavens. So بَدِيعُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Lona is Lona. He is the one who fabricated perfectly the heaven and the earth and if he decrees anything he will say be and it was. So they're saying that Allah Azza wa has begotten a son and he is in subhana, glory be to him, he is in no need of a son. He's the one who created everything. If he created the earth and then in another ayah in the Quran, later we will see in the Quran Allah Azza wa says لَخَلْقُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Indeed, the creations of the heaven, the creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of human mean. But most people are not even aware of this. The creation of the heavens and the earth. Look at the galaxy. And then if you, you know, latest reports from NASA, NASA, they were looking at the, all the different galaxies and all the different, you know, stars that resemble earth and stuff like that. And they're counting them in the billions. I and mean, we're talking earth, how vast... How huge this earth is nothing compared to billions of stars and planets in the galaxy. Billions and billions and billions. And Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying, very indeed, indeed, the creation of the heavens of the earth is greater than the creation of human being. And here they're saying that Allah needs a son. And Allah says, glory be to him. He does not know he, if he says to, some, to a matter be, and it will be. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ لَوْ لَا يُكَلِّمُنَ اللَّهُ أَوْ تَأْتِينَ آيَةً See, they, now they're still questioning those who have no knowledge. And uh, 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 so what they're saying, that if Allah can come comes down to us and talk to us, or He will show us a clear sign. Allah Azawajal says, Indeed, this is the people that were before them had said the same thing, the same speech like their speech. Their heart are the same, are very, you know, similar. And, you know, the, the people, to, even the people today, the people before, you know, people like, oh, where is where's Allah? Everybody wants the proof. And it's not enough for them, subhanAllah. Indeed, we have made the signs very clear to people who, يوقنون, who has yaqeen, who, who can, who, who truly believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. When you truly believe and you see the signs around you, they see the skies, the moons, the stars, the galaxies, the trees, the birds, the animals. And you realize all of this is a creation of Allah Azza wa Jalla that was not created out of nothing. Allah created out of, you know, didn't create it out of no reason. Then you would realize that truly He is the creation or the creator of everything. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla, He is testifying. Indeed, inna arsannaka wal haqqi bashira wa nadira. Indeed, we have sent you in truth as a given of glad tidings and as a wonder. So what does that mean? You give glad tidings to the believers. You tell the believers, you tell the mu'mins and the mu'mina, the believing man and the believing woman, and those who do salat and those who obey Allah Azza wa Jal, that you're going to go to Jannah. I mean, you're giving them great news, that's glad tidings. And nadira, and you're warning those who refuse Allah. Those who refuse to worship Him, you're giving them a warning. That if they continue doing that, they're going to end up in hellfire. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, verily we have sent you as in truth, as a, as a giver of glad tidings and as a warner, وَلَا تُسْأَلُ عَنْ أَصْحَابِ الْجَحِيمِ And you're not going to be uh, 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 questions or you questioned or you're not responsible for those who will be the companion of hellfire, jahim, the very evil place to be, which is hellfire. And then Allah Azza wa Jal gives us this ayah. And he says, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا النَّصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ This ayah, every one of us need to understand it very, very, very clearly and internalize it 
and think about it as we deal with the people who are not Muslim, especially the Jews and the Christians. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Walan. And they will never, ever, 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 the Jews and the Christians, be pleased with you unless, hatta unless you follow their way of life, their way of religion, their way of living. So the Jews and the Christians, if they are pleased with you, if they're happy with you and they love you and they embrace you and they, they think you're a great Muslim because now you're like them, know that you're actually embracing their religion, you're not embracing the Islam. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, the only way the Jews and the Christian will be pleased with you when you follow their way of life, when you follow their religion. If you know they're pleased with you because basically you, you're, you're compromising your religion, you're giving up things from your religion just to please them. Our intent in Islam is to please Allah Azza wa Jalla. Not to please the Christian, not to please the Jews, not to please the Kuffar, to please Allah. Sometimes they might be like, oh, mashallah, Islam is beautiful, it's a good religion. And, you know, they, some of them are, are, are nice and, and they think that you're doing, you know, good things. But they truly not going to love you, the love of a Muslim to a Muslim brother, because Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran earlier, they envy you. They envy our religion. We have a, we have a complete, perfect religion. They don't. And... And, and, and they will never be pleased with you unless you follow their religion. Then they will have total pleasure with you. And, that's, and our intent is to please Allah Azza wa Jal and not to please them. قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى Tell them verily the guidance of Allah is the true guidance. It's not your guidance. You know, calling me moderate Muslim and calling me extremist Muslim and calling me this Muslim and that Muslim. There is only one Islam, which is following the book and the sunnah. And if you do that, you please Allah. If they were pleased with you as a side effect, it's okay. But it's not, our intent is not to please them. Our intent is to please Allah Azza wa Jal. Tell them the guidance of Allah is truly the guidance. وَلَئِنْ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعَلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مُوَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Then Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us a great warning. And these ayahs actually get more and more strong when we go to, to Ma'idah about this specific topic. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَلَئِنْ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ But if you follow their desires, what they want you to do, بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعَلْمِ After you have truly gotten the knowledge, which is what Allah Azza wa Jalla taught you about them. بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعَلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مُوَلِينَ وَنَنْصِيرٍ You know that you will not get from Allah, Allah will, not be no, will, will no longer be your helper, or the one who is going to give you victory, on the day of Qiyamah and in this life. That Allah Azza wa Jal is, has, has let go of you. You're, 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 you have to seek the pleasure of Allah. We don't seek their pleasure, but we have to behave in the best of manners. If we behave as good, as good Muslims, they're going to look at us, they're going to see, MashaAllah, look at those people, how they behave. They eat, you know, they eat this kind of food, they don't eat pork, they don't do this, they dress up this way. We kids at school, they say this word and this word and this word. We Muslim, we don't say those words, right? We're not going to say those things. We're not going to dress like them. We're not going, if their shorts, if their pants go down all the way here, our pants are not going to go down all the way here. We have a modesty in Islam for men and women, right? So in school, everywhere we, we, go, we go, we have to behave in a manner that is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal, not to those who are around us. Because if you, if you are pleasing them, you know that Allah is not pleased with you. It's, it's, it's like a very, very simple equation. SubhanAllah. Uh, uh, and then Allah said, And those who, whom we have given them the book, they take the book, and then they recite it in the best manner that it needs to be recited. These are the people that truly believe in it. So among the Jews and the Christian, then there were people that used, used to recite the book, used to, to you know, try to learn from it, and they have truly devotion about it, in it. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla, these are those who truly believe in it. And anybody who, dis, who, who doesn't want to recite the book, doesn't want to learn the book, doesn't want to follow the book, Eventually, the whole surah of Al-Baqarah, the whole surah of Baqarah is about what? Sama'na wa ata'na. 
we heard and we obeyed. The Jew says and the Christian says, we heard and we disobeyed. Subhanallah. So those who recite the book, those who understand the book, those who learn the book and truly you know, work with it, these are those who truly believe in it. And, and Allah says, uh, And anybody who rejected or reject Allah or reject faith, these are the losers. Ya Bani Israel. Then Allah remind the people of Israel again. Ya Bani Israel, Remember the bounties and the favors that I have bestowed unto you. This is the second time Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah repeats the same ayah. Oh Bani Israel. He started this whole thing we've been talking for weeks now about Bani Israel. We started, oh children of Israel, remember the favor that Allah has given unto you and, and all the things that he've done to you, blah, 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 all the way. And now Allah here is, this, here is concluding it. And he says, and, and he's reminding them that I have fa have, have given you favor over humanity. In what sense? Why did Allah favor them over mankind? Over, not mankind, over the alameen, over the worlds. Why? Because he has made from them the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam and, the, and, and in them all the prophets and all the kings to go and lead the humanity toward Islam. But what did they do? They lost it. They rejected it. So then Allah Azza took the final message, the complete message from them, and he gave it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, descendant of Ismail alayhi salam. Why did he do this? It's the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal. But he did it their own doing. They rejected. Allah Azza wa Jal kept sending them messenger all the way to Isa alayhi salam until they wanted to kill him. Then Allah Azza wa Jal took that away from them. Subhanallah. It's, it's, it's the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. What taqwa yawm la taji. This is also a repeat, a very similar ayah to the ayah before it. What taqwa yawm and fear a day. La tajzi nafsun an nafsin shay'a. No soul is going to. Uh, uh, take, you know, it's going to help. Like, for example, I'm not going to be able to, to tell, oh Allah Azza wa Jal, don't punish my son, punish me inside. You can't. You can't do that on the day of Qiyamah. And you're not going to be able to exchange. You know, no, I'll, I'll take from him and give, it, give me some of his sins. I'll give him some of my hasanat. I have extra hasanat. You know, I'll help him. That's not going to happen. وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ and they will not be victorious. On that day, every soul is for their own selves. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا except those whom Allah Azza wa Jal has given them special favors. Like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be a shafi'ah. He can intercede. So some people will, but the default is everybody is on his own. You know, you can't just say because he's my son, because he's my father, because he's my brother, because he's my neighbor. You can't. Everybody for, is, is for their, themselves. And then Allah Azza wa Jal here remind us about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And uh, this is the... Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about this story inshallah and I will conclude. So we have a page and a half inshallah to go. وَإِذْ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُمْ Look, subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal gives us half an ayah, very, very short, yet the meaning of it and, and the, the, uh, the impact of what happened in this half an ayah is so tremendous and so huge. وَإِذْ ابْتَلَى And know how Allah Azza wa Jal has tested Ibrahim in what? In few words. He tested Ibrahim in few words. فَأَتَمَّهُنْ Ibrahim fulfilled them 100% completely. Not a single thing missed. What are those words? Kill your son. SubhanAllah, it's not an easy word. O Ibrahim, take your wife and your son Ismail all the way from uh, uh, Jerusalem. All the way, take them f to, 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 to in, a, in a valley where there's no vegetation. Leave them and walk away. He did it. O Allah, O Ibrahim, do this. He did it. O Ibrahim, do this. He did it. Not a question. And Allah tells Ibrahim in words, he fulfilled them completely. Then Allah says, because he did this, and, and what was his reward? قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا He says, I'm going to make you a leader to mankind. Who is the leader to mankind? Ibrahim alayhi salam. He's the leader of this ummah, of this nation, of us. 
Because Allah Azza wa Jal tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ هُوَ سَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ We follow the way of life of Ibrahim. Here at the top of the page, Allah Azza wa Jal says the Jews and the Christians will not be pleased with you unless you follow their way of life, their millah. And then Allah Azza wa Jal tells us you follow the millah of Ibrahim. Don't follow their millah. The millah of their father, Ibrahim. Who came, why? Because he was Hanif and Muslimah. He followed his religion in Islam, total submission to Islam and true devotions. So here Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, He says, I'm going to make you a leader to mankind. He says, how about from my offsprings? He says that uh, those, he says, uh, how about my offsprings? So Allah Azza wa Jal acknowledged, yes, from your offspring it's okay, but those who are wrongdoers will not get my covenant. So those, there will be among your offspring, there will be people, people who will go astray, people who will be good Muslims, people who will obey, people who will you know, not obey. So those who are wrongdoers, they will not get the covenant, of, covenant from Allah Azza wa Jal. And, and, and this what happened. The Jews, after they kept, 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 kept rejecting Allah Azza wa Jal, put the final beautiful message in Prophet Ismail, with Prophet Ismail, a descendant of Prophet Ismail alayhi salam, with, with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and how now we will see how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to us it was a dua from Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam it's one of his dua and we will see this in a minute then Allah azza wa jal says uh, wa id ja'alna al-bayta mathabatan lin-nas wa amnan wa attakhidu min maqam Ibrahim musalla and indeed we have made out of the house the very first house that was built to mankind to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Which house is it? It is Al Kaaba. It is Mecca. In Kaaba, Al Kaaba in Mecca. There was no house of worship built for Allah Azza wa Jal before Kaaba was built. And here Kaaba has not been built yet. There is no Bayt al Maqdis. There is nothing at the time of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he has taken his son Ismail and Hajar, left them and his wife left them in, in, in the desert, came back. To slaughter him, Ismail is older now. He came back to do what? To this occasion here. So then Allah Azza wa Jalla, we're going to make you an Imam to mankind. In Surah Al Hajj, you're going to do Adan to mankind, and mankind will come to pray. He says, "There's nobody here. I'm just going to do Adan." And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "You do the Adan, and we will make people answer." He made Adan. Ibrahim called people for Salat. People came from all over the world. And we go to Hajj every year, we're answering the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Adhan. وَأَدْنِنْ بِالنَّاسِ فِي الْحَجِّ And call people in Hajj. Who? Ibrahim alayhi salam. يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجِّنْ عَمِيكَ They're going to come walking, they're going to come on everything that you can ride on. Animals, planes, you know, automobile, anything, they're going to come to this, this, this place. Uh, 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 and we have made this house a place that people will want to come to, a pl place of visitation. Mecca and Kaaba is a place of visitation when it was built. And the Prophet ﷺ says there are two places that people should go and travel to to visit. What are those places? Bayt al-Haram and Bayt al-Maqdis. Mecca and uh, 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 Masjid al-Aqsa. These two places are the places that people, it's okay to go take a vacation to. You know, go and, 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 and go to those places. Uh, and then Allah Azza wa Jal, وَاحِدِنَا وَاتَّخِذُ And take out of the maqam of Ibrahim, and take out of where Ibrahim has lived, a place, a musalla, a place, a, a masjid, the very first masjid. So this is your Kaaba, built it, and this is the place where it's the masjid. And all, you know, all of us were going to direct, uh, we directed our salat toward, it, toward that place. وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ أَنْ طَهِّرَ بَيْتِيَ لَلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَرَبْكَةَ سُجُودِ And we have made a covenant with Ibrahim and Ismail. Now he, Allah Azza wa Jal has given them a job. To do what? To purify the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, the very first pure house of Allah Azza wa Jal in Mecca, to, to للطَّائِفِينَ, to those who come. And those who want to come and stay and live in it. وَالْرُكْعَ السُّجُود And those who do ruku' and those who do sujood. It's a place of salat and Ibrahim and Ismail are the servants of that place to mankind. Subhanallah. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَرَبِّ and, and, and here Allah Azza wa Jalla, uh, uh, there's one thing that I didn't mention. وَاتَّخِئَ uh, uh, وَاعَهِدْ 
Okay. And Ibrahim asked Allah Azza wa Oh Allah, make this town a peaceful town. The most peaceful town on the face of the planet is Mecca. It's a place, it's, it's peace. You go there, there's peace. There's no war, nothing's going to happen. Allah protected with mountains. And Allah Azza wa Jal today is protecting it with, with everything. SubhanAllah. Allah, Allah, you know, it's a place that ev everybody fears to go there, the kuffar, and Allah put the peace and the tranquility in the heart of the believers. And then why? Because Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah Azza wa Jal says, make it a peaceful place. Better than aminan. Warzuk ahla. And bring rizq to its people. It's a desert. There's nothing there. And he bring rizq to the to you. Warzuk ahla. Min thamarat Out of the fruit. Man amana minhum bil yawm billahi wal yawm al akhir. And, and uh, 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 those who believe in Allah and the hereafter, bring them sustenance and bring them fruit. قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرْ Then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, and those who disbelieve, I'm still going to give them fruit and food. But I'm going to give them this for a small period of time, which is during this life. فَمَتْيُوا قَلِيَا ثُمَّ أَطَّرُوا إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And then I'm going to take them to the punishment of hellfire and what an evil place. To be in, so so then Allah Azza wa Jal has agreed with this covenant with Ibrahim alayhi salam to make it a peaceful place and a place where people will come to it. Now, here Ibrahim and his son Ismail started to do what to build the Kaaba. They wanted to build the foundation of this Taqwa Masjid, the most Taqwa Masjid on the face of the planet, built by the one that is most, you know, that has zero shirk in his heart. He was the Khalil Allah, the the closest you know, a friend to Allah Azza wa Jal, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and his son Ismail. And his son was a young child. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ And Ibrahim and Ismail, they are raising the foundation of the house. So they're taking, making, building those stones, or cutting the stones, and putting them, and they're raising the foundation, one stone at a time. And every time they're building a stone, what do they say? رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ minna. Oh Allah, accept from us. Remember when we were working towards building the masjid, working towards doing everything in the masjid. You know, one of the things that we, you know, we were reminding ourselves as we're doing all the work. Oh Allah, accept from us. Oh Allah, accept from us. Just like Ibrahim salam was building the masjid. When you build the masjid, you're building it so Allah will accept from you. Not for show off, tell the people, look what we've done, look at this, look at that. We have a larger masjid than your masjid and stuff like that. It's the house of Allah. It should be a masjid of taqwa. So as they're building for every rock, they say, Oh Allah, accept from us. Imagine, Ibrahim salam and his son Ismail building Kaaba and they're asking, Oh Allah, accept from us. Subhanallah. We should humble ourselves as well and everything we do, Oh Allah, accept from us and make it, you know, uh, 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 in our, you know, scale of good deeds. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Verily, you're the one who hears everything, who knows everything. رَبَّنَا وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ دُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ وَأَرِنَا مَسْلِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, جَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ Make us two Muslims. Me Muslim Ismail and me Muslim Ibrahim. وَمِنْ دُرِّيَّتِنَا And from our offsprings. أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً We need a nation that is Muslim. The nation of who? Ibrahim and Ismail. Who come after them from them? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, make from us a nation that is truly devoted itself into Islam to you, that submitted directly to you, وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا and teach us the way that you want us to worship you. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا and have tawbah on unto us and, and forgive us and, and accept our repentance unto you. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ You're the one who accept, who, who, who accept repentance and you're the one who is most merciful. Then they went further. And now they ask him about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rabbana wa baath fihim. And O oh Allah, as they're building the Kaaba, send to into them Rasulan, a messenger from them, from among them. Send to them from among them a messenger. Yatlu alayhim ayatik, the one that's going to recite unto them your signs, the Quran, the ayat of Allah azza wa jal. Teach them Islam ayatik. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ As he is going to teach them the book. Today we're holding that book, the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
uh, والحكمة and the wisdom ويزكيهم and he's going to purify them إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم and indeed you are the all wise you are the all uh, uh, you have all the glory of Allah Azza wa Jal so they're praying to Allah Azza wa Jal here Allah Azza wa Jal notice there is something that is very important because we're going to see it in two pages next week inshallah they're asking Allah Azza wa Jal send unto them a messenger from them. Why? Uh, the first thing he's going to recite unto them your signs. And then he's going to teach them the book and the wisdom. And then he's going to purify them. That's the order. Uh, recite the signs, teach them the book and the wisdom, and then purify them. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, he reminded them later here in, in, in the next two pages. He says, فيكم رسولا منكم يتلو عليكم آياتنا ويزكيكم. So Allah Azza wa Jal changed the order. He says, okay, you ask for a messenger who's going to teach you the sign. And then he's, gonna, he's going to recite unto you the sign of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he's going to teach you. Before he's going to teach you, no, no, no. He's going to purify you first. And then he's going to teach you. So the answer of Allah Azza wa Jal says, I'm going to send unto you. A messenger from you who's going to recite unto you the sign. He's going to prove to you Islam and Allah Azza wa Jal. But then he's going to purify you. Once he purifies the heart, then he's going to teach you the book and the wisdom and how to behave. So before you learn the behavior, you have to purify yourself. It's called tazkiyah. So in Islam, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to teach us and purify us and get our, get our heart cleansed and clear to him. And then we start to learn more and more and more. So we learn with the with a pure heart as we learn Islam. And this is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam and, and Ismail. And Allah says, yes, I heard your dua, but I'm going to send you the Prophet. He's going to purify you first. Subhanallah, this is the honor of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, no one will turn away from the way of life and the teaching of Ibrahim except those who mock themselves. Because if you turn away from Ibrahim, you think your way is better than Ibrahim, you're, 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 you're just mocking and you're, you're, you're humiliating yourself. Because the way of Ibrahim is the best way that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with to humanity. We have chosen him over everything in this life. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّادِحِينَ And indeed in the hereafter, he is among the صَادِحِينَ, among the righteous ones. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلَمْ Look at this. Allah has told him, أَسْلِمْ Become Muslim. What was the answer of Ibrahim alayhi salam? قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ He says, I submit myself in Islam to the Lord of the worlds. This is the order, you know. أَسْلِمْ, be Muslim. He says, I am Muslim to you, O Allah, you're the Lord of the world. This is, this is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Who are we to be, you know, to do less than Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam did? Whom Allah azza wa jal has raised his stature over all of mankind. Subhanallah. Uh, 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 wa, wa, I submitted to the Lord of the world. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam, he took that advice and he used it to who? To his children. He asked them to do the same. وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ Ibrahim, he went and he advised. And he told them, he says, I give you this wasiyah, I give you this. This is my, you know, the, 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 the ask that I have from you before I die. I'm asking you. وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ his, his children. وَيَعْقُوبُ And Ya'qub is his grandchild. So he has Ishaq, he has Ismail. He told them, stay Muslim. Die as Muslim. And he told Ya'qub specifically, his grandson, because he lived to see his grandson as well. And this was in, in, in Surah Hud. When, when the angels came in, they told his wife, you're going to live to see your son, Isma Ishaq, and you're going to live to see your grandson, Ya'qub. Subhanallah. And she was already an old woman when, when, when that glad tidings came to her. So he told his grandson, Ya'qub, Ya baniya, inna Allah has tafa lakum al -deen. Oh my children, Allah has chosen for you this religion. Do not die except on the state of Islam. Don't choose any other religion. Die as Muslims. Then Allah Azza wa I'm, I'm almost going to finish here. There's two more ayats. Or did you bear witness 
when death came on the bed of death to Ibrahim to Yaqub alayhi salam, he is on the bed of death and he was dying. And when the prophets are dying, the angel of death would come to them and take their permission to take their life. So now death has come to take the life of Yaqub alayhi salam. He was on the bed of death and the angel of death is ready to take his life. So what was the last thing that Yaqub told his children? He gathered his children. Yaqub's children, how many children? Twelve. Including Yusuf, including Yusuf alayhi salam. Twelve children around him. He called them. He says, Yaqub al-Mawt is qala li bani. He says, O my children, ma ta'abuduna min ba'di. What are you going to worship after I die? قَالُوا نَعْبُدُوا إِلَهَكَ وَإِلَهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَقْ We will worship your Lord and the Lord of your fathers, Ibrahim, Ismail, and Ishaq. إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا Only one Lord. وَنَحْنُ لَهُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And indeed to him we are submitting in Islam. So they promised their dad that they will die on the best state of Islam. So then uh, Yaqub was happy. He asked the angel of death to take his life and he is gone. Subhanallah. So the last will of Yaqub to his children, what are you going to worship me after me? He said, we're going to worship your Lord and the Lord of Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq. And we're going to be, submit to him in total submission as Muslims. Then Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us, Tilka ummatun qad khalat. This is a nation that just passed. Laha ma kasabat. It's going to earn whatever it has earned. Walakum ma kasabtun. And you get what you have earned. وَلَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا كَانْ يَعْمَلُونَ And you will not be going to be asked of what they used to do. Everybody is responsible for themselves. Do you want to be like Ibrahim and his children and his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren who only accepted to die as Muslims? Or do we want to, you know, just follow our desires and follow anybody who's at school doing whatever they want? We have to stick to Islam. We have to only die as Muslim because this is true success. True success is when you know you're going to meet Ibrahim, inshallah, alayhi salam, in Jannah, inshallah. Wa jazakumullah khairan, inshallah. Any questions? Okay. Jazakumullah khairan, inshallah.